So thank you for having me. Um, my name is Natalie Douglas. So I'm currently working for the University of Reading with Tristan Quaif, who is one of the um, co-organizers who we saw a little while ago. So the title of my talk is using the 4D on VAR, VAR data assimilation technique in land surface models, but um, it's mostly a miniature lesson for 4D on VAR, but I will come back to land surface like towards the end. Um, I know there's probably a lot of uh, DA experts here, but since I'm the first one, it can't hurt to um, have a little overview. So in DA, we're essentially combining two sources of information and um, background information for a state, which could be either, um, uh, sorry, a state vector or a parameter vector, and then some um, observations at different times. And so we have a forward model, which takes us from um, one state, uh, a state at time i to the, the next time, and we also have an observation operator, which maps us from the state space to the observation space. And because we have two sources of information, we have um, two, um, two bits of uncertainty information as well. So I've introduced all of the notation that I'm using. Um, so you've got your X's for the state vector, Y for observations, H for observation operator, and then B and R are your background and observation error covariance matrices. So you're probably all familiar with 4D VAR. So in 4D VAR, we're essentially looking to minimize a cost function that weights a, a prior term. So this is the um, information that we have about the um, background state or background information about the state. And then on the right-hand side here, we've got an observational term, which um, um, is weighted by the error covariance matrix R. So um, B and R are inverted here. So if you've got, um, if you have less uncertainty about the prior, for instance, then your BM inverse will give more weight to that term in the cost function. And we're essentially trying to minimize this and, and weigh up that, you know, the best, uh, an optimized state that takes into account both, source, both sources of information. So you might not be as familiar with the hat notation. So normally you would see a, a sigma, which um, adds up all of the cost terms over each time. Whereas what I've got here is um, a concatenated version, so a compact form where I have the um, concatenated observations. I've got H hat, which is um, mapping at each time. So you're starting from an X zero, you would map with your forward model to um, the next states, and then you would use your observation operator to take that to observation space. And then similarly, R hat is, um, is um, just a, a compact form for the error covariance, observation error covariance matrices each time. And if you have no covariances between your observations, then this is um, ultimately just a diagonal matrix. But um, to minimize this cost function, we have to find a gradient. And um, lots of problems arise when you do this, um, specifically finding um, an adjoint. So lots of um, differentiation to be done, and that can be quite difficult, especially if your, your code is quite complicated. And also you've got, um, a B matrix as well, which um, if it's not conditioned properly can slow down your, um, your optimization. Um, here we've got, I'm just showing you what the adjoint looks like in the, in the compact form. So your H at is just basically um, products of Jacobians um, that you get from the chain rule if you have to differentiate um, a, a chain at each time step. <clears throat> so if we're doing this, um, we have to make sure that we um, do the correctness tests, you know, um, test the adjoint and do gradient tests, um, which applies for, for most um, optimization problems anyway. So as I mentioned, some of those problems, um, non-linearity in the um, 4D VAR case um, makes it difficult to find a global minimum. You're essentially optimizing a, a non-linear function and, you, and you're, you'll only find a, a local minimum. Um, so I said the, the B matrix can be um, ill-conditioned, slow down your optimization, um, and the differentiation being quite difficult, but also we don't usually get an update to the error covariance matrix when we're using 4D VAR. So the first um, problem to combat um, is non-linearity, and, and essentially 4D on VAR will sort out the rest, so I'll come to that after I've spoken about incremental 4D VAR. So, if we assume that um, there is a small perturbation to the background state, so our optimal X would just be um, our background state, the so knowledge of our, back, uh, of our state, um, 
plus delta x, so some small perturbation, we can um, linearize and um, turn this cost function into a, um, a quadratic one, and a gradient will be linear. So um, as you can see here in the, um, the prior term, the um, x minus xb just leaves the delta x. And then here what we've done is taken a Taylor expansion. So this is the same um, uh, uh, derivative um, matrix as before. So the same adjoint comes out. Um, and then um, what, we're, what we have, as you can see there, so quadratic cost function, linear uh, gradient, which um, makes the problem a lot easier to find um, um, a global minimum. But you do introduce um, the need for another test here. As, um, you do need to test how, uh, over which um, type, uh, how long your uh, assumption of a, um, a linear model is actually valid. And then the magic comes in when you do 4D on VAR. And so this is where you introduce the ensemble. So instead of uh, you know, just a, an increment here, delta X, we're assuming that um, we can take an ensemble and then um, and the ensemble mean is going to be our, our background state. Um, these are the ensemble perturbations defined by um, taking an, an ensemble from parameter space. I should probably tell you a bit more about the ensemble. But assuming the um, background state is updated by some linear combination of the um, perturbations to um, your, um, your, your perturbations in your ensemble. And this W here is actually an ensemble space, so it's a, a smaller problem. So as you can see, um, I uh, mentioned the ensemble will be taken by depending on what your um, original X is. Now in my work, I'm doing um, parameter estimation. So my state vectors are um, parameter vectors. So uh, what I will essentially be doing um, in joules is uh, picking a parameter um, or a, a set of parameters. And um, um, I, I know from my background state what the distribution of that um, parameter should be. And then I can sample from those and then define my ensemble in this way, and then my ensemble and perturbations in this way. And this also allows us to um, uh, get an approximation for the, the, error covariant, the background error covariance matrix B. And it's um, also preconditioned, so it, it helps with a lot of the problems of 4D and VAR. So if we, if we take this setup, um, we have another change to the um, cost function. This time, the background term is simplified with just Ws in. So the B inverse actually um, cancels. And then um, we've got the same term as before, where this was um, the H bar matrix. But we can now avoid calculating adjoints and H bar and differentiate uh, Jacobians um, because we have an ensemble and the perturbations of that ensemble can be um, uh, if you like, transform to observation space. We can approximate that H hat matrix multiplied by um, the perturbations in the parameter state to perturbations in the observation state. So what we're doing here is just a, another Taylor expansion uh, to approximate those derivatives. And then as you can see, this is the, the full model. So we're just mapping um, ensemble members um, into observation space, well, propagating forward if you have a, a forward model as well. And when you do um, parameter estimation, you assume that parameters are fixed, so that, that the complexity of the uh, forward model actually disappears. But um, the, the magic of this is you are actually um, getting rid of all the difficulties and, and the problems that you have um, from doing um, 4D VAR. Um, one of those being the fact that you can now actually um, update the ensemble by borrowing um, a, a, a result from the ensemble Kalman filter. So they have a, a, an update to the um, error covariance matrix. So you can get the uncertainty information in your posterior estimate. There's a lot more um, linear algebra that goes on here, but um, essentially you make this assumption, you do some linear algebra here, and then you're able to do a square, square root of um, a matrix to get an update to the ensemble to find your analysis. Okay, so um, 
And I prepared this slide uh, specifically for this talk um, because um, recent talks have sort of highlighted some issues. Um, uh, um, that, that there's not a lot of testing that goes on with forging involved from from the offset. So um, I, I strongly encourage like a like a simple test to forging on VAR um, with with uh, the modules that you're using. So what I've got here is uh, I've chosen one parameter that's um, in the Jules in the Jules model uh, used to estimate um, sorry used to model GPP so gross primary um, productivity. Um, it's a um, a quantum efficiency parameter. So what I've done is I've got some prior knowledge of um, my my alpha value and some uncertainty information on that so i've got my prior distribution so then i can um, um take a, um, an ensemble from there and this is the uh, the prior ensemble and what i've done here is i'm testing my 4 on var by taking a truth run so i'm selecting a parameter value of alpha which i was deliberately low as you can see on this side um, and then lower than my my prior information, I run my jaws for my my truth value, my prior value, and for my ensemble. I run the four D on var, and it should behave something like this. Now the re uh, um, the reason this is so is working so well is because it's just one parameter, and I'm and using a truth run. But this is just a simple test that you should implement to make sure that your four D on var is working before you introduce. Uh, real observations. So as you can see there, it's, it's behaving well it, um, because there are some approximations in the um, in the 4D on VAR um, cost function and its gradient. And um, there isn't an exact match there, but it is behaving how you'd expect it to. And you can see that the um, analysis to so your um, optimal estimate is almost recovering the, the truth run exactly. So yeah, so strongly recommend to do um, synthetic runs when um, testing 4D on VAR. So I think I'm almost out of time. Um, so this is actually um, a result that my predecessor um, came up with and published in 2020. I think Ewan is speaking next actually, but on something unrelated. Um, so you can see that this is 4D on VAR um, in practice. And this was also done with a synthetic run first to make sure um, that it works properly. But there are multiple parameters being op optimized here. And you can see that the um, the uh, posterior GPP is, is um, matching up with those um, observations quite well. I'll just show you in the previous slide as well. The RMSC is a good indicator to show that your 4D on VAR is working. So it's worth um, keeping those in. From the next left. Okay, I'm just about to finish. Um, so um, I actually have um, some 4G on VAR Python code um, ready for anybody who wants to, to use that, and that's on GitHub there. Um, and the work that I'm currently doing with this is to um, optimize for um, some stomatal conductance parameters um, and choosing, like because in JAWS there's a couple of um, stomatal conductance models. So I've been testing um, those out trying to use 4D on VAR to find the um, the parameters that do the best performance for GPP there. And I'm also um, looking at um, 4D VAR versus 4D on VAR for um, dummy models. So see see which um, which of the methods performs better in which areas. And then future work will include doing this for um, um, the observational information that's in, already available in some dual suites, so the FluxNet suites, and then some NEON sites that are, are being introduced. And of course, um, as the new data sets become available, so cellular induced fluorescence and carbon monosulfide, we'll be using those as, um, as the observational data as well. <clears throat> and I'm just about to lose my voice <laughs> today of all days. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's me. Thank you.